Hello everybody. So today we're going to get some practice drawing faces and the best way to do that is references. It takes a lot of studying of the face and all its nuances to really get good at it. And so you always want to work with references or with a live model or with a mirror of some sort. So that way you are actually studying the face for a long time before you're really going to be good at drawing it just straight out of your head. So for this exercise, it's going to involve you finding a reference, a photograph of a face doing a certain expression, and then you're going to make drawings of that face. The first one is going to be a direct representation of that face. I want you to do your best to capture that likeness. I want this to look just like that person there. I want you to uh, capture their expression, get that same exact expression on their face. I want to feel that emotion that they have. You know, I want it to look like them. I want it to match their features, match their proportions, everything like that. And then the next step is to then try to use that reference as more of an inspiration. So you're then going to draw other heads that are based off of this reference you have here except now you don't want to make it look like that. You want to make it look like a different person. And you can see how you can use these same features, you know, use the eyes, use the mouth, but change and distort things. Make them look older by adding more wrinkles or make them look younger by reducing wrinkles or even changing the proportions of the face. It's really a great exercise to help you explore and see what you can do with references because chances are when you're designing a character it's going to be extremely hard to find the perfect model of exactly what you have pictured in your head but if you can find a model that's close enough to what you like and then see how you can change and distort those features it can help make life so much easier for you and so this is a really great exercise for getting practice like that you're gonna do one of them that looks like, just like the reference, and then you're gonna do two or more others that try to look like a different person. Uh, really understand what you're seeing in the references and understand the features and seeing how you can change them. You can push and pull the age. You can really see how you can make someone look new and different. And really try to see how you can play with this and have fun and see how you can push that character to make it look different. You know, you're not making it up out of your head, you're really using those photographs from inspiration. So try to make one that, you know, maybe your second drawing you do, you know, is a slight deviation from the original face. And then the third one maybe goes even farther. See if you can push that even farther from the original reference there. And you can see how things like hair change on all these, it doesn't stay the same. Um, even the shape of the ears change on these, the nose, the mouth, the eyes, you know, really try to break down what you're seeing in the features and see how you can push and distort that to work for you. So to start, you're going to have to find references of people making the six basic emotions. So you're looking for sadness, anger, joy, fear, disgust, and surprise. So do your best to try to find really good examples of each emotion. You know, try to stay away from someone with a blank face. Like I want these to be like exaggerated emotions here so we can really see and understand, you know, the emotion that we're seeing. And that way you're, you're not just playing with a deadpan face. I want to, to really feel those. So do your best to find really good references that are showing those emotions. Make sure we can see their entire head. I don't want to just see a close up where, you know, the top of the head's being cut off or the ears being cut off. I want to see their whole face from the top of their head to their chin. I mean, this one's getting cut off just a slight bit, but that's close enough that I can fill that in when I do my drawing. Also try to get a variety of faces here. You know, I wanna see a variety in ages, variety in genders, and variety in ethnicities. It'll give you a good chance to really study the different facial features uh, that can range from person to person. So make sure they're really nice, high quality pictures, have decent lighting. I would try to avoid ones that have too flat of a lighting because then sometimes the facial features uh, get all lost if there's really bad lighting on it. But uh, do your best just to make it as easy as you can by having nice quality, strong pictures that, that really show off each of the different emotions. 
And once you have them, you're gonna place them all in your document here, put them in different layers, have them labeled so it's nice and organized, easy to find. And then make sure you put the references in the top left quadrant of this page here. There we go. So that you have room to do your other three heads on here. And you're gonna do, the one to the right is gonna be the exact duplication of this head, and then the two below are gonna be your chance to really push and manipulate that face. Okay, so I've got my pencil brush here so I can be as sketchy as possible, and I'm working on a new layer so I'm not working on my reference. And I'm gonna start by trying to block out the head first, trying to get that basic shape down really trying to get that oval. And I wanna think about as I'm doing this, I wanna basically put a wireframe on here when I'm starting. That way I'm thinking about where's the eyes, here's that, and where is the center of the face? And that's really gonna help me when I'm starting out here to line up the features the best I can. And a lot of the goal here, you know, is capturing the motions, but you also want to capture the likeness the best you can. So really I'm paying attention to what is that, where is the side of the face? Where are the features in relation to this? And you're not tracing here. I want you to be doing this freehand as always, because that is the best way you're really gonna learn how to map out a face here. So I'm actually starting first by kind of just laying things out to get things uh, just kind of blocked in. So I'm being pretty sketchy first and after I get my basic layout, then I'm gonna start tightening things up. So this is my reference for sadness here. And I really liked her exaggerated expression. I can see, you know, the furrow and her eyebrows down here. I mean, you got the tears on the face too, uh, which really, really helps, you know, sell that emotion. And my face feels a little wide. And remember hair is part of this too. So I'm gonna try to get the hair in here and I'm constantly checking and double checking all my features to see how they line up. Just like you do in the figure modeling, you're always trying to improve it as you're going on here. And we don't need the whole shoulders and everything, but I like to have at least have an implication of where the shoulders are. Actually, this is feeling still a little wide. Okay, when I start to have things laid out, I'm actually going to lighten this up and let's make a new layer so I can start to tighten this a bit. really trying to get that profile of the side of her face and that's so important in capturing the likeness of someone is getting that profile and pay attention to all the proportions that we talked about how everything lines up here as you're going along you know, this is, this is supposed to be a study. You know, you're, you're really supposed to be trying to understand what you're seeing as much as capturing it. Because that's just gonna make this even better for you and more helpful if you're really trying to, to capture um, and understand at the same time. And 
and I'm, I'm constantly checking, you know, how do these things line up? I can already see my, my eye is definitely too far apart here. Because that brow is furrowed here, you know, the eyebrows are coming closer together than they typically would be. And I'm going to keep that sketch on underneath until I feel like I've gotten, you know, pretty much all of this laid out. And actually, the nice thing about digital is that you can move things around as you're working if you feel like, oh, this is a little bit high. I'm going to move that down. And then maybe my mouth is a little bit high too. There we go, that feels a little better. It even might still be a little high. Okay, feels a little better. And these don't have to be totally finished drawings, but remember you are trying to capture the likeness. So you don't want to rush through, you know, trying to put this together here. So it's okay if things are sketchy. I'd rather things be on the side of being sketchy and accurate than having, you know, a totally finished drawing here. really thinking about that hair. And I'm not gonna just draw in every strand. I like to think about that hair in chunks. You know, there's, this is a piece, this seems like a piece, maybe this is a piece, this is a piece. That's where I try to group it together. And I'll draw a few hairs in here and there to kind of like fill in that space. But that that's how I'm like looking at the hair as a whole here. Because if you go ahead and draw every single strand, you're gonna eventually, you know, it just looks starts to look like straw that's on top of the head. It doesn't look realistic. I don't need, yeah, I don't need that anymore. And I'm just gonna keep refining as I'm going along here. Trying to get those eyelids. 
Because getting that, that bit of eyelid on top is just as important as just doing the, you know, where the eye is itself. Getting the eyelashes help tell where the direction of the eyes is. I actually can't really see the eyes in here in general. It's kind of just all dark. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid placing the eyes in just because I know it's there. Trying to get those tears. Really thinking about how each of the features wraps around that face. Remember, it's a three-dimensional face. You know, nothing here is flat. Okay, let's get those shoulders in here. Okay, and that's pretty much what I'm looking for here when trying to capture that emotion. All right, now let us do another one. And let's go for this again. Okay, so now this one, you want to try to take inspiration, but also try to make this look like a different person. And it's tough. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this is something I do all the time when working. I'm always, you know, trying to see how I can alter and change the references I have to try to make it look like someone else. So it's really trying to see what are the essential pieces of information and how can you alter that to make it look like someone different. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I start by blocking in the face, try to find where that center is. Where are my features? I may actually start by laying it in pretty accurately as at first, you know, trying to, to do it like I did the first time where I'm trying to match her, her expression and her proportions. But then as I start to get it laid out, I may start to change things here. We're gonna see how this goes. Sometimes I'll have a plan when I do these things, but sometimes it's it's a matter of like figuring out as it goes, you know, what what works best with these features here. I typically think that changing the hair usually does a lot of wonders when when changing uh, your drawings here. I want to get rid of those bangs. I feel like those bangs are, are pretty distinctive. So that's going to involve filling in this forehead. How else can I style her hair? And usually I'll have some sort of other references with me too. If I have like something in particular in mind, you know, if there's a certain hairstyle I want, 
Um, especially when a lot of projects I do, uh, sometimes I'm drawing historical figures and I'm really trying to, you know, make it look like a specific person. Uh, this is exactly what I will do. I will photograph a model who looks similar to what I'm going for here. And then I will have to look at actual photos of, you know, that historical person or that celebrity and do my best to really alter those features so that it looks like the actual celebrity or historical figure I'm drawing and not like, you know, the, the actual, the per the model I used. I haven't figured out what I'm doing with this hair yet. <laughs> See if I can make her chin a little shorter. Maybe give her more rounded cheeks here. This is kind of like my playing, me playing around here. I could give her curly hair. That can help change this maybe. And the, I mean, really the challenge of this is trying to make it look like someone different, which is not an easy feat, but also trying to still capture that expression. It's really, it's really tough. You think it'd be a lot easier than it is, but it, it honestly takes a lot of practice. And especially with something where, you know, it looks like she's smiling. It's really hard to capture that emotion at the same time. Maybe I'll narrow her nose a little bit too. Okay, let's go forward with this here. So I'm gonna lighten that, make a new layer, and then I'm gonna start tightening this. you definitely have a lot more freedom when it comes to doing something like this where you're changing uh, changing your references to make it look like someone else because really matching someone's likeness is so hard especially when I do things like children's books where I'm drawing the same character over and over again uh, it's something that they actually didn't really emphasize for me in school very much, but trying to capture the likeness of someone, especially, especially when you're drawing them over and over again, is really difficult. And the same thing goes, you know, in animation and games. You're drawing that same character over and over again uh, from different viewpoints or different angles, and it's so hard to make it look like that same person. You know, it... It's deceivingly difficult, even if you have like the perfect references, you know, trying to keep that likeness is really difficult. So sometimes just doing one off characters like this, where it is, you know, you're not trying to match anyone in particular, you can make it look essentially however you want, can be a lot easier. But then try to do this with the same character over and over again. <laughs> Uh, that's when things get really difficult. So that's why usually having a model, you know, like the perfect model 
or even having, um, or even making like a little maquette, like a little sculpture of your model and photographing them at different positions can be really helpful. Uh, that's what James Gurney does. That's what he did for his Dinotopia books. He actually photographed, he made a little sculpture of his main character because he didn't, you know, he didn't have a model for him. And so he did photograph, you know, someone standing in as the character. But then when it came to doing the likeness, he then had that little, that little model that he sculpted and actually uh, used that to try to get the likeness accurate. Maybe I'm going to make her hair even bigger. That'll help make her look like someone else even more. Just playing around. Okay, let's see if I can get rid of that. Yeah, now let's narrow down these features. Once again, I keep playing around. I'm still changing things as I go along here. Nothing is set in stone yet. And you can see, you know, I changed the proportions of the face. I tried to make it a little squatter than the original. Um, also, you know, changing the hair does a great deal to really make it look like someone different. So it's okay if you want to have like references next to you of what you want this person to look like. You know, if you want them to, to look more like someone else, especially if you're having trouble figuring out how to change the features or to change the hair, you know, feel free to, to really, you know, use more references. It doesn't have to just be, you know, looking at this one. As I said, this takes a lot of practice. And, and that's really good practice, you know, you have to have to be studying the, the actual <laughs> facial features of a lot of people to get really good at this. And I'm really picking and choosing how I'm going to change these features as I'm going along here. Trying to make some smaller, some bigger, but you know, things like this little, these dimples in the cheek here and the dental sphere that goes around the face, that's really important to capture. You know, the general shape of the eyebrows is important, although I'm trying to make them like a little bit thinner than the original. It's all about pushing, pulling, and distorting to see how you can make them look different. Okay. I think that's good for this one. And let's go ahead and do my last one here. So I'm gonna make another layer. Actually, let's just do a couple. I wanna just get those shoulders in here just so I stay accurate to what I had before. Okay. Okay, let's go to my last one. Starting the same way drawing out that oval, thinking where are the eyes, where is the center of the face. Okay, and so thinking as I go along here, what can I do to make this one even more different? And, you know, sometimes when I have a lot of trouble getting like the perfect character, uh, sometimes, you know, I will use a woman as my model for a man. Sometimes I will have to change ethnicities if I can't find, you know, the right character. 
There was one uh, textbook illustration that I had to do where they specifically wanted a girl that was half Indian, half Chinese. And it is not easy to find uh, a model that is the right age, you know, that very specific, you know, mixture and, you know, find someone who I think fits the character of who I want. So that was a, a real specific case where I had to uh, really think outside the box of how I can uh, actually make a model, um, how I can actually find a model that feels right, but uh, how to change them to make it actually look like the right person. It's not easy. It is definitely not easy. I might put an ear on this one. Not sure yet. Yeah, I've used myself as models for so many things. I have altered how I look so many times. You know, I have made myself look like a boy. I've made myself look like an old woman. I've had to change my ethnicities when, you know, especially for like background characters. You know, sometimes you don't have the resources, whether it's time or money or something like that, to, to hire models for each person. As I said, I am the cheapest and easiest model to use. So <laughs> most times I will use myself. So it takes a lot of practice to really figure out how to alter yourself to make it look like someone else and not like yourself. And that's what artists do all the time. I'm really seeing how I can push this one here. <laughs> Once again, I don't really have a plan. I'm just kind of playing along, seeing how I can change this up as I go. Ooh, maybe I'll... I'm almost going for like, I don't know, someone old or more skeletal. It's kind of what I'm thinking here. Seeing I can really elongate the face. I'm thinking those cheekbones are up here. That's where I have this cheekbone. So that means this cheek has to be up here. And you can see right where that, this is where the cheek is. And that crease comes right up underneath that. And as you're changing your features, remember things still have to line up. You know, the center of the face, that center of the nose still lines up with the mouth. You know, you can't change things like that. Some things always are going to be the same. Okay, I think I like this plan here. Actually, maybe I'll have her hair go back. this one here. And the trick I know I'm already gonna have or the trouble I know I'm gonna have as I continue this one is still trying to make her look sad. I feel like my the shape of my character I'm going for something a little creepier. Uh, so I want to make sure I still capture that emotion. Really want to emphasize that cheekbone here. Like, she lost a lot of weight is kind of what I'm thinking. 
really skeletal. See that bone even more on here. I even emphasize the bags under the eyes a little bit more. Maybe, uh, I don't want to emphasize that too much. I feel like if I start to play around with the, making that eyebrow even higher, she might start to look angrier. We'll see. Maybe make these lips a little bit thinner. Definitely don't think she looks sad yet. So I'm gonna have to work on that. to add an ear on here which is not easy because there is no ear in the reference but I want to do one where she doesn't just have her hair covering up everything Do I need just a little bit longer? Okay, let's get rid of that underdrawing and then let's refine this a little bit more. She definitely looks a little too happy. Emphasize that furrow on the brow a little bit more. thinking of her hair as like being wet or just really flat or gelled down in some way on the head.
think that is about good. I think I feel like I have created two different people from this one. You can still see, you know, the influences, like that nose definitely carries in, in each one of them, the mouth, but you can see the subtle differences I'm making as I'm trying to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep going with each one of these. Uh, remember, you're trying to, first one, you're trying to capture the likeness. I want this to look as much like the original model as you can. I want it to look like them. I want it to be the same proportions. Always double checking your proportions as you go. Um, and just doing your best to, to really study those features and facial expressions. So then when you go to your next two ones, try to make it look like two different people. Think about how you can push and pull those features to distort them to make it look like a different person. Uh, feel free if you want to pull up other references as you're doing this. You know, maybe it's hard for you. You're having trouble trying to figure out how to change these features. So pick, find a photo of someone who maybe looks kind of similar or someone who looks very different and take features from that and merge it with that person. It definitely takes a lot of practice, but this is a really great exercise that will both make you very good at capturing features, but also by breaking it down and seeing how you can change them, it makes you start to understand how these features really work as a whole to create a person and the changes you can make to make them look different. And remember, my, my big goal when I go to change a person is changing the hair can always make it look like a different person very easily. Um, so make sure you really play around, have fun, be creative. I think this is a really fun exercise to do. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here.